I travel around the world looking at people's handbags. From London to India to Singapore to Australia to New Zealand, Los Angeles, and then New York. Now, we're going to play a little game of catch here. Let's kind of push this around. Just keep on pushing it around. Chuck it back, chuck it back. Yep, the guy who's got it now, that's it. Oh, who's got, yep, you, whoever's got it. <laughs> okay, this is going to cut into my time a bit more than I thought. Um, could, could you just, okay, brilliant. One, just one of you, please bring me the world. <laughs> bring me the world. One of you. Thank you. Come, yep, no, I need you as well, please. Yes, please. Uh, Silvia and I were chatting um, during lunch about the contents of her handbag. She comes from Italy. Um, a round of applause for Silvia, the translator. <laughs> now today, Silvia, you're going to be playing the part of a 20-year-old Indian boy. His name's Babu. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, I just arrived in India, and it was my first day, and I didn't have any friends. So I thought, ooh, let's go and find some friends. So I went to the National Museum, and... Uh, well, I couldn't find any other people from the Western world. And then I was walking down the street. I was incredibly stressed. Babu was following me around, so follow me around. And he was saying, shoe shine, sir. I do you shoe shine. I do you shoe shine. Keep on going. Very good. Very good. <laughs> and I was just like ignoring. This boy was following me around. I was like, no, go away, go away. And then I got to the traffic lights, and it was like on red. It was like, bang. OK, I'm stuck. You can do my shoes. So get, get on your knees. <laughs> Do my, that's it. So the, the clean. And I, okay, sir. Yes, I had to take my shoes off as well, Babu told me. So I took them off. And I was, for the first time, I was ever like, ooh. Oh. I had an absolute sense of peace. Because I couldn't go anywhere. Babu had my shoes. And I was, I was just stuck. And it was the best part of the beginning of the journey. And then Babu and I, Babu, um, we became friends. And then I helped you set up a business. And then um, you could uh, fund your mum and your sister and things like that. And you were my tour guide for a couple of days. So thank you very much to Sylvia. <laughs> and this is what, this is what the real Babu looks like. Then, here we have Babu and the family. Now, as a designer, my life has always been conditioned by a couple of posters that I had on the wall as a child. I um, obsessed with the color red. Um, I, so you had these posters? Oh, right. OK, it's not these ones. It's these ones. I was obsessed with cars, so I set up a car company. And then I was obsessed with women. And I thought, what's a good way to meet women? Well, let's, uh, let's look inside their handbags. So on the beaches in India, I met Andrea, who had a Frisbee in her handbag. And the reason she had that is because she was getting away from the recessions in Germany and living for 100 pounds in luxury a month. Then I met a lady who, traditional middle class Indian woman, who had four forms of identification, an Indian airline stewardess who refused flatly to go to university um, and rather wanted to become an airline stewardess because she knew then she'd get married. And all she had in her handbags was a lot of makeup. I found that the older the people were, the less they tended to have in their handbags. And this gentleman in Singapore had five credit cards, but when we were in conversation, all he could do was moan about the state of Singapore. Then in Australia, I met a young lady who had five purses in her handbag. In New Zealand, I walked into a farm and met Mate. And as you can see, he doesn't have anything. He just has a a Walkman that he listens to U2 on and seems fairly content with life. 
I moved on to Hollywood, where I met Chris, who was originally from Birmingham. And he told me a little bit of a story that in the past, he was uh, taking a few too many drugs. So he moved to LA, and um, he had many tattoos. And I was sleeping in a bunk above him in the youth hostel. He's actually quite a smelly guy. So I was pretty shocked when I found out that in his handbag, he had a, a set of ceramic hair straighteners. So looking here at the bottom center, we've got some Maori girls in New Zealand. And I walked into there, and I was, you know, feeling a bit cocky. I thought, oh, I'll just walk into a school and just stop their lessons. And I chatted to them, and I said, I wanted to look in your handbags. And they were like, OK, fine, but stop. We're going to talk to you for one hour about our view on life and how the white people came over from the West and took away our land and certainly killed a few of us. Real eye-opener. And then moving on, I met Anderson at the Grand Canyon, bottom right here, who, was a, who told me a great secret from his ancestors. He, he's a little bit overweight now. In his, in his handbag, he had uh, a couple of blockbuster cards and three gym memberships. But he got me to sit down at the edge of the canyon. And uh, we got us to pull our knees up like this. And then um, rub some earth and put it into our knees like that. And as we all sat around looking down at this amazing landscape in front of us, he said, Will, just take this peace that you have right now within your heart and remember it later on in your life when you're stressed. But one thing I... One thing I found about what everyone has in their handbags, which is far more than the contents, and what they valued far more than the contents, is that they value their thoughts a great deal more. Then I moved on to look into my own handbag in New York. And with all my own personal possessions around me, I figured that Right, let's get the world back. And one lucky young lady is going to have their handbag analyzed. So when I say stop, keep on throwing it, unless you really <laughs> Keep on throwing it. But those are men. I want women's handbags. OK, well, that's not going to work. Do we have any ladies who would like to have their handbags opened up? Yes, we do. Welcome to the front. What's your name and where did you come from? Dominique from London. Dominique from London? Yeah. Right, well, welcome to London. <laughs> it's not a long journey. Right, let's have a look in your handbag. First of all, um, what's your favourite item? Actually, tell us about the handbag. For, it's a quite an old handbag. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not, it looks... It's just a HMV number. All right, OK, yeah. keep on holding Sorry, that. Um, H&M. OK, H&M we've got a, one glove or two. Two. Handbag. This is a very empty wallet. What, what do you do for a living? I'm a student, that's why it's empty. Ah. <laughs> Five pounds. Yep. And we've got a few cards here and things like yep. that. Um, then we've got a pencil case. And what do you study? Creative writing. Creative writing. Yeah. And a book. <laughs> yeah. What's it? Well, who is it? Um, I've only just started reading it. It's just a Peter Porter book. And uh, I'm meant to be reading a lot for poetry. So. I just keep it along with me, even if I don't read it that much. OK, well, this is like a handmade diary. Yeah, I made, um, I made a diary for, for pretty much a university, just like so I know where I am, what I'm doing. Okay, a bit of uh, <laughs> lip salt, hairbrush, yep. hand sanitizer, <laughs> and a pen. It's quite messy. I mean, there's hairs yeah. all over the place. Um, <laughs> very creative, are you? Yeah. yeah. And what's your favorite thing in your, in your handbag? That. This. And what yeah. have we got here? I got this as a present, and it's pretty much, if you've kind of run out of ideas, you throw these nine uh, dice, and uh, you can make a story with it. Um, so there's like loads of different items on the dice, and it kind of gives you a bit of creativity. That's brilliant. You yeah. seem very creative yourself. <laughs> so thank you very much it's okay. um, for looking for your handbag. <laughs> and um, what I deduced from that 
is that uh, you're very creative and, and quite fun and very outgoing to have to be up here. So thank you very much. I'm going to give you uh, all a very quick lesson. The principles of life are the same as attracting women. First of all, you entertain them. Then you ignore them. Then you listen to them. Deliver. And move on. People often ask me, you know, what was the highlight of my trip? Um, this was the best photograph, which in a way kind of sums up my journey. Because although I've been looking at handbags and material possessions, none of us really need a handbag in our lives to be happy. We just need to do what we really want to do. Thank you. Thank you.